So what's the what's the deal here? Did someone actually asked me to, to to review these this this garbage deck. What is this? You know, it's not as if I play this deck regularly or anything. Yeah. What do, what do you mean? Like, you know, you can play the, any deck you want. Oh. No, no, oh. stupid. Anyway, um. Yeah, I don't know why I'm profiling this deck today. Uh, it's Simorg. Um, probably the most budget of budget decks ever to have existed in the past month. Um, I was able to build this entire deck pretty much at its own sneak peek. Um, and through playing it, I realised that the deck can, you know, it can kind of win against Sky Striker. Because one of their particular monsters can't be targeted by spell or trap cards or effects. Um, but anyway, let's get into the profile. Um, I'm sure you're all very excited to see what I have in mind. Um, we're going to start off with the big monsters first. Uh, we're playing three Simorg, Lord of the Storm. Um, yeah, it's it's a really good card. Level 8 wins. Uh, has two separate effects. Um, so it can't be targeted by spell or trap effects, and uh, when a spell or trap card is activated, you contribute another wing beast, um, another wind wing beast from your field, and then shuffle or oh, target one card your opponent controls and shuffle it into the deck. Um, and also, if um, when a winged beast uh, when a wing beast monster is destroyed by battle, while this card is in the graveyard, you can add this guy back to your hand. So really cool card. We're also playing the one bird of ancestry now. This card is awesome, especially um, because this deck, I believe, is a firm going second deck. If you tribute summon it using only wind monsters, you can bounce any two cards your opponent controls back to the hand, um, which is fantastic. Uh, some really good um, spot removal there, and I believe it doesn't target either, so all good. Uh, two darkness. This is basically sort of like Diablos, but not quite. So when you tribute summon a wing beast, uh, a wind or dark monster, um, da, 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 da. Yeah, if you tribute summon a wind or dark monster, you can special summon it from your hand or graveyard. It has that Diabolos um, PSCT attached, that problem solving card text, which means it will be able to come out regardless, uh, which is always nice. And it has some nice uh, hard ones per turn spell or trap negation um, by tributing another wind beast on your field, which is awesome. Uh, the one copy of Dark Samorg, um, again. If you bring this card up first, going up against a trap-based deck, you pretty much win. You can side in cards like Anti-Spell Fragrance to really put the burn on. Um, but again, it's few and far between. But you like to have this guy because you can also bring him out really easily, um, providing you can modulate the levels well enough. Uh, we're playing the one Apex Avian. Again, it's a level 5 or higher win monster, so you can reveal it off the effect of the field spell to bring it out, which is really cool. Um, and it's again, it's just some, a nice bit of extra negation on the field. Uh, we're then moving into the small Simorg monsters. So we're playing three of our Rota. Uh, all of these little guys share the ability to special summon themselves from the graveyard if your opponent doesn't control any back row or spell and trap cards. So this guy searches any small card from your deck to your hand. Uh, this one grants you an extra normal summon uh, when it's normal summoned. So a good thing to do with this is to summon it, apply its effect to get you an extra normal summon, then link it off into an Al Mirage or like a Link Rubo or something. And then um, you'll be able to tribute summon any of your bigger guys without the use of the field spell, which is cool. I'm playing two Calamity. This is sort of like a Foolish Burial for some more cards, but um, it's very sort of niche in its application. So... Um, Sometimes you want it to dump the big dark, um, the, the big Samorga darkness, but um, most of the time, you know, it's not it's not like the end of the world. Uh, and then we've got a couple of extenders. We've got one copy of Turquoise Warbler, and then um, one copy of Mithra. These basically special summon themselves onto the field, and this can potentially grant you an extra normal summon, which is really cool. Uh, moving on to the spells, we've got the three copies of Elborg accompanied by the one terraforming. Elbors is your play starter, basically. You can reveal a level 5 or higher wind monster in your hand, um, and then that reduces the tribute cost by 1 for tribute summons for the rest of the turn. And also, um, if you control a wind wind beast monster, you can gain an additional... Uh, you can normal summon um, 
an additional wind monster just off the bat, just, just normal summon a wind monster using its other effects. It also gains a nice um, 300 attack and defense point boost to your wind wing beast monsters. Um, but both of its effects are hard ones per turn, so you might want to keep that in mind. I'm also playing three of this incredibly cool um, search card. So you can discard a wind, uh, a wing beast monster and add two small monsters with different attributes from your deck to your hand. Spoiler alert, it's going to be one wind and one dark. It's always going to be one wind and one dark. I don't think they've printed any small monsters of different attributes. You can at me and quote me on that if there is, because I have not seen any of them. Uh, and it also can banish itself from the graveyard to reduce the level of um, uh, all winged beast. Oh, uh, you select a monster in your hand and all the monsters with the same name reduce the level. So that's really cool. Uh, one giant true nade for your opponent by discarding a wing beast monster. Um, pretty much a good card for dealing with back row. Not much else I can really say. You know, I'm not trying to sell this deck to you or anything. Uh, three desires because I fucking love this card. Um, and uh, also, you can also try and run trade in because we do run a lot of level eight targets in this deck. But this is just there for, um, you know, consistency, I guess. I mean, extravagance would probably be a better option. Not gonna lie, because the extra deck isn't really something that's, you know, staple. Should we say? Uh, then for power, uh, three core by the grave and three mind control. Mind control is really cool, cool in this deck because you're playing the link. Uh, you can play the um, wind charmer link monster, which um, if you're still one of their monsters, all it takes is another wind monster to link off into it. So it's always good. Uh, three copies of the best card in the deck. This is Harpy's Feather Storm. This card is fantastic because your deck's based on wind beast monsters, and you can shut off all monster effects your opponent has just by dropping it. Um, if you're running the Harpy Link Monster, which uh, is, a, is a suggestion for the extra deck, you can activate this thing from your hand. Um, so yeah, who needs impermanence when you've got something like this backing you up? And then last but not least, two copies of Icarus Attack to you know blow up the board and it's a nice retro card, isn't it really? Okay, um, now extra deck is just something as a form of suggestion. You can go by this any way you want. I'm just throwing some suggest uh, suggestion cards at you guys at the moment. So we've got one copy of uh, Velga. Um, it's a 2400 um, Link 3 that requires two plus wing monsters and can get itself up, itself up to really high attack and can also disrupt your opponent's graveyard. Um, you can run any number of that. You've got cards like Underclock Taker, Al Mirage again, really good suggestion because you can link off your really low attack monsters. Harpy Conductor, definitely want to play this if you're running um, Harpy's Featherstorm because it turns on the um, activation from hand and it also only requires two wind monsters. So, you know, you can bring this out whenever you want. Uh, one rubber band shooter, it gets you an additional normal summon of a wind monster out of your hand. That's all you really want to be using it for. Uh, two copies of the Windsham of Vedant because we are playing Mind Control and we want to disrupt the opponent as much as possible. And then for XYZ monsters, you can run like some Lyralusk monsters. We've got the Recital Starling. We've got the Assembled Nightingale there as well. Um, and yeah, that's basically everything. Um, it's one of those decks where you're not going to be getting any sort of competitive success with it, but you might be able to take a few people by surprise with it, um, you know, at, at worst, at best. Um, it's a really fun deck to play sometimes, but not all the time. Um, it takes a bit of getting used to um, before the amount of losers you get with this deck can, you know, put you on your ass. Um, but like I said, I like the deck. Um, apparently, there's rumours of Samorg getting a Link monster in the new Link Reigns Pack 3 leaks. So, you know, with any hope and luck, that will, um, you know, give the deck a much needed boost. But as it stands, you know, it's a nice little tribute deck that you can take a lot of different things into. Okay, so thanks for watching, guys. Big Al signing out.